this is our second morning and our last morning. Um, we gotta be out of here by 12. I don't know what time is it? Mm. It's only like 8.13 right now. We went to bed at 9.30 last night. Woke up at 7, so we got a lot of sleep. It was awesome. Kind of nice. We brought just a bunch of bottled water. I brought some like Capri Suns and she's got her, she likes to drink these in the morning instead of coffee. A little V8 energies. But drinking lots of water. So mm -hmm, lots of water out here. Our system, I think. Definitely, yeah. Got a lot down on the RV while we were here. Met some nice folks. We evaluated what we need to do. Yeah, there's not a bunch of big changes in our plans of things to do. I think the biggest factor is a bit of relief that there's not any, there wasn't any like unknown major issues mm -hmm. to deal with outside of the two little water leaks. Not a big deal. We really enjoyed our time in the RV. It felt, I would say, really natural for us. We kind of talked about it and we were just like, yeah. felt at home, you know, other than our kitties not being here and kind of talked about taking apart our cat tree and, you know, where we want to position some of them things yeah. around here for the kitties. We have like a giant, like six foot tall, multi-tier cat tree that Spy, our long haired kitty, she likes to hang out in there. So yeah. she's one of them, like she likes to be up high to lord, lord over all of this. So Let us I want to make sure she has, has spots where she can climb up and feel safe more mm -hmm. or less. Yeah. Know? if we use that cat tree and it's already got their smells on it, it'll mm -hmm. help them adapt, I think. The crows are freaking out outside. I'm sure you guys yeah. can hear them. They're noisy in the morning. Okay. They're like the roosters of the swamp, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, in bed last night after I woke up for a little bit, it was like five in the morning and I was thinking about maybe just staying up just to enjoy the time more, but it was kind of chilly and I didn't want to fire the furnace up and wake her up. And then, yeah, because I totally like, got out of bed if it was warm. But I was laying there and just kind of looking at everything and it was like, it feels kind of like a home, you know? I mean, it feels like home, you know? Yeah, it really does. It felt good, you know? Supernatural. It still feels a little surreal. For me, it doesn't feel like dreamy surreal. It's mm -hmm. just kind of like, it's getting a little bit more on the real side, yeah. you know? For me, when we first got here, it felt super surreal, like actual dream life. Like I was like, I can't, <laughs> excuse me, I'm trying to make a video in here. Oh yeah? <laughs> but it felt super dreamlike. The more we're here, the more I'm kind of sitting into it. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. This is our new reality and everything. And I love it. I love it. Yeah, I mean, we've done good getting around each other, mm -hmm. navigating the space, you know, like, I think both of us would agree we would like more countertop space. Yeah, more countertop space would be nice. I do like that we built the desk right here because whenever yeah. we're cooking or we're pulling things out, we're kind of using that a bit and that's really helpful. We'll have less of that space when we get the computer The computer in, yeah. We'll have to set that up somehow yeah. where we can use a little bit of the desk. Maybe we could flip down off of that or something. Yeah, that's not a bad idea actually. Yeah. I was surprised because we both, like I said, we both woke up last night to use the restroom and snack and apparently we didn't wake the either one up either like both times we didn't wake yeah. up i didn't hear him get up he didn't hear me get up yeah. so that was really shocking i think we were like out though yeah probably just deep sleep mm -hmm. usually i mean at, at home in our bed it's memory foam mattress like i can't tell when you get out of bed at all okay that's good because i get up you a know? lot to pee and snack yeah. and usually if i do wake up it's because i heard something and the like cats or something yeah. here you know this thing rocks pretty easy getting up moving around but we're not sure some of you guys might have some tips on this but mattress wise the one that's in here that came with the rv it's decent it's pretty firm though mm -hmm. and we could put our two inch foam mattress topper on it and i think it would be comfortable for us but then there's the fact like hey, it's not, no one likes sleeping on someone else's mattress right i mean we cleaned it we yeah. sanitized it and we have our sheets and stuff but it just kind of we're used to our mattress yeah. And we have a pretty good mattress, I mean. Yeah, but the flip side is, I've heard that memory foam mattresses like to 
absorb moisture from mm -hmm. your sweat and stuff. And that's why you have like slats and beds, like our bed oh, frame, because right. that lets air underneath to help right. keep them dry. So, so there's something. a little question in my head is, okay, should we do the memory foam mattress and just see how it goes? But I'd hate to be sleeping on a deal. Wet mattress. Damp. Yeah, what do you guys think? People that have already need for a while, like, yeah. what's your preference? Yeah. So I'm kind of going back and forth on that. I might look into it more, see if you guys have any tips on that or experience. Mm -hmm. I think I don't know if we mentioned it before, but Luke bought us a, a diesel heater. It was like $150 online, but it's a good backup to have. We haven't installed it yet, but we were kind of talking about where, where to, to install it. it. So it doesn't need a lot of space, but it's also where to put it, you know, because you have to drill holes for your intake and exhaust, and then you want space for your ducting to blow the heat around yeah but since our plan is to go to kentucky and back to oklahoma in the middle of winter i want to make sure we have auxiliary secondary heat source which i'm very thankful yeah. for because you know we don't we're, want we're cold. skinny and yeah we don't have a lot of meat on our phones we're thinking about putting it under this chair yeah, though under here because right here there's this metal framing for the seat belts so we can only use half of this storage space anyways. But, but it's, it's just, just me and it. Yeah, Luke. me and her, so we don't we're not expecting to be hauling around six kids. Mm -mm. Just, so we don't need that, you know. So if we take that out, we'd have that we'll extra take that space. Out, put a duct under the table to keep our toes warm and then have another duct on this side to blow heat towards the back of the RV. I think it'd be good there. I think that's probably the best option. Mm -hmm. I was kind of wanting to put it in the bedroom area originally. But we don't have a ton of space in there. There's not much room back there unless I want to use the toolbox right. under the bed. And yeah, stuff. under the bed is just tools now. Yeah. Um, and that's works really well for us because, you know, you got some money in there and you know, want to keep them safe. I mean, if someone comes in like, well, first off, they're not going to get very far, but it's underneath us, so <laughs> good luck. So those are, you know, those are in a good spot. Yeah, so the outside storage, all they're gonna be able to take is our sewer pipes and right. water treatment And stuff. I don't really think anybody would wanna mess with that anyway. <laughs> Hopefully we're in safe areas, but I mean, you always have to be prepared, right? Yeah. Like, you know. But definitely, I mean, I have a lot of paring down to still do. Mm -hmm. Cause I have a lot of stuff in here still like, underneath your seats full of just stain and paint and mm -hmm, stuff that mm -hmm. we don't want to be traveling with. No, we kind of hold on to some stuff because we weren't sure what we were going to use and we still have close to a month left before we're going to leave. We're, we're planning on leaving around the 20, I think, I think it was like the 23rd. Yeah. We yeah. have about a month. Yeah, we're less than See what we can do in a month. Solar's worked good this whole mm -hmm. time. Haven't had, got a little bit of shade from some of the palms around us, so it hasn't been doing a lot of work, but we're plugged in, so battery, everything's staying charged and topped off. Refrigerator's been working really good. Really good. Like, the propane on the fridge wasn't working when we left, mm -hmm. so we were running the inverter from the solar to get the battery to start chilling when we left. Just to run the refrigerator, our, my battery monitor was saying we could run it for like eight hours on right. just the battery and solar alone. And we're so, never going to travel for that long. Yeah. You know, we're not going to ever travel for eight hours straight, knock on wood, I hope. Yeah. But it's just great because you don't have to use the propane to open it up while you're traveling. Some people say that it's dangerous anyway. And it's just, it's really nice to be able yeah, to have nice that. Like that. A little bit of a backup because mm -hmm. the last thing it'd suck if we were out of propane, you know, it'd suck to lose a fridge full of food. Oh, yeah. So to that have was... just the solar option on the inverter to keep things cold long enough for us to go get more propane or yep. get plugged in somewhere. So. I'm just, I'm so thankful for all the things that Luke has purchased for us and put in and installed because I just feel so safe. In our environment, I feel like we're gonna thrive. It's really awesome. I really appreciate it, babe. Thank you. Yeah. And it's just it's just like when you're prepping, like uh, you know, apocalyptic preppers or whatever. It's just backup, backup, backup. Whatever you can have to back up in case something goes out, get that if you can afford it. You know, yeah. save up and get it. That would be my advice so far. Even though we're not on the road yet, it's just it's good to have those backups. Yeah, some redundancies. You know, like I went ahead and ordered 
I have at the house a new serpentine belt for the engine. Like, because if that breaks, you're in the water, you can't go anywhere. And they're cheap and they're light, so why not carry an extra one around? Right. Like, order a second fuel filter. It's easy to replace, but, you know, a plugged up fuel filter, you can't go anywhere. Right. Know? I do probably, I want to look into maybe getting another backup water pump mm -hmm. for the, the house end. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be a good idea. Our neighbors were saying they paid some guy hundred bucks an hour yeah plus travel they said it ended up being a thousand dollars yeah over a thousand dollars to have a guy come out and replace their water pump you know and it's like <laughs> and they said that you know then you guys know this if you're in rv life but it can take anywhere from six weeks to six months to get your stuff changed and that's why you know luke was really considering maybe doing some side work when we yeah. got an RV. Like, hey, you have a leak? Like, let me take a look at it. Because nothing sucks more than having to leave your vacation to go get something fixed and then you pay an ungodly amount of money to do it yeah. when maybe, you know, yeah. he could take a look at it because he works in automotive. So that could be kind of cool. Yeah, it'd be the plus side to keeping some of those kind of universal extra parts around mm -hmm. not only for backup for us but be able to maybe make a little extra gas money mm -hmm. or stop somewhere to help someone else out you know because you i mean be really 100 cool. bucks an hour to do something like that that's like, insane if i turn 50 bucks an hour which is crazy still yeah but they're still that's half as much as they pay someone to come right <laughs> you know and it's like you never really i mean i'm not trying to down the shops but it's just like you don't know exactly what's happening when your car is in a shop. You don't know if you're actually getting that full amount of time to where it's like, if someone's in front of you doing the work, yeah. you know? Well, the problem about most shop styles, they're all commission based. Right. So if it pays two hours to do the job, the mechanic's going to try and do it in one hour so he can make twice the money, basically. Mm -hmm. If he finishes it in one hour, he still gets paid the two hours. Mm -hmm. So that really encourages a sloppy like do it fast type of environment yeah and then you know, just from what i've seen in this rv <laughs> the sloppy do it fast uh, <laughs> you know yeah to me it'd be more about trying to do it right oh that's how you are uh, yeah for sure but even then you know if it's just if i can only duct tape it together for the person so i don't have the right part or yeah. the right tool or something still that if that gets them home yeah at least you, you can know. let them know hey this is what you need to yeah. do and this is how far it'll get you kind of right. you know situation but or, you know gets them to at least finish their weekend now you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. but it's exciting because you know around here at least at this campground they have little signs um and they even said like you know you could put up little signs if you're here for a while some campgrounds i guess will let you some won't but we could do like a repair and cleaning i don't know if anybody would actually be interested in that i i like to clean and organize you guys know that but i mean i don't know just like an awning cleaning or something while you're here i mean that could you know take me a few hours or i don't would that be something anyone would be interested in? i don't even know I need battery died sorry we'll just go ahead and review the campground area while we're here uh is this i believe this is called midway campground in ochope north of the everglades mm -hmm. between we're down. <laughs> whoop, whoop. We're down in this. Yeah, we'll put a map. But we're down in the <laughs> southern part near the Everglades, or pretty much in the Everglades. But this campground is super dope it's basically just like a big circle drive um with about probably 26, 26 oh RV exactly spots. 26 mm -hmm. rv spots because we're in the last one and then they've got a little tent area yeah over there too and a bunch of day use little gazebos around the pond mm -hmm. it's super clean like really well maintained yeah there's right. an alligator in there yeah a little baby one so a little alligator it doesn't have water or sewer hookups at the site mm -hmm. you have to go fill and dump down the way a little bit which is no big deal like that's that's fine it's not a big deal they have bathrooms that you can go use yeah. um they don't have showers here 
but everybody's super friendly. They sell firewood for ten dollars a bundle right over there. Yeah, the camp hosts are really, really super nice. Super nice. They have a little book exchange over there where they have a few boxes of books and you can just trade them out or read them if you, at your leisure. Uh, they had a little sign for free coffee, which was really cool. Everybody rides their bikes or their motorcycles or walks their dogs around the way and says hi to each other. Uh, they say, yeah, it's it's really, really nice around here. Yeah, um, like, there's been a few kids pedaling around on their new Christmas bicycles and stuff. You know, they, everyone's been really chilling. It's been super quiet. Like, super nice out here. It's only $30 a night here. Uh, mm -hmm. for the RV and then I think obviously the tent camping is even cheaper yeah. but super cheap for Florida. That was we found this on recreation.gov mm -hmm. and from what I, I can tell most of these style sites are like $30 ish. They have an app too, recreation.gov app and I've never heard of it on all the forums and posts and stuff that we've been reading i've never heard of it and i'm like that's actually a really nice app mm -hmm. you can't pay cash for the spot when you pull in you have to reserve it on the app mm -hmm. they won't accept money at all and like we saw there were the people that drove up here and was talking to the camp host right in front of our site and they were even telling the people oh you have to go to recreation.gov and reserve the site mm -hmm. you know so yeah and i mean we're probably going to use that site for our future if we have to camp instead of boondock we will be using that site it's yeah. fantastic it's not overpopulated here it's uh just really chill yeah the, you know? the spacing between spots is pretty good mm -hmm. we're on the very end of this side so we don't have any neighbors on this side of us but even if we did like i would say it's probably maybe 16 feet between mm -hmm. driveways yeah, that sounds right so it's it's good comfortable spacing mm -hmm. the power hookups were a little i mean they had 20 amp 30 amp and 50 amp which 50 wasn't listed on recreation not good hmm. And then that's all on breakers. We did our little check and everything was wired correctly. Yeah. The post was a little floppy and the screws were kind of coming out a bit, but like that's pretty standard, I think, yeah. from what I've heard. If you don't have lawn chairs or something, you've got a little slab out here. You've got a little area over there for the fire, yeah, just a little metal enclosed area. Pit, yeah. yeah, it's super pretty. And then we found that little movie theater area in the back. That was, that was so cool. That was cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we walked through and I was a little freaked out thinking a gator was going to get us, but you know, we still had to do it. And just some little hidden spooky theater area back there. So cool. Yeah. It looked like it hadn't been used in a long time. Right. But you could, I guess, if you had a portable projector, you could set up your projector out there and watch a movie if yeah. you wanted to. That's kind of neat. Really rad. That's probably something that maybe they should freshen up because mm -hmm. the benches were all kind of like, eh, yeah, you know, but, but it was kind of neat because I like finding little gems like that. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, they didn't have it listed anywhere and there was no signs. It's just kind of something you, just you find, finding. you know, mm -hmm. I would definitely say that I would give this place a thumbs up. Luke? Yeah, it's, it's a, I, I mean, let's be honest, it's our first paid campground we've stayed at, but like, <sighs> I would stay here again without yeah. even having to think about it. I'd be like, yeah, this was a great spot. Like, yeah. so for me, it's a, it's a five star little campground. I know. love it. I love yeah. it. So yeah, if you're in or around the Chopee, Florida, I hope I'm saying it correctly, mm -hmm. then definitely stay at Midway Campgrounds. And we will post a little link below so you guys can find everything. But we enjoyed our stay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So now we gotta start packing up. Uh, we'll be on the road again soon. Yep. Yay. Mm -hmm.